start with a nice clear work table and have materials and tools to hand. Now is a good time to plan how you're going to hang your work. You'll need some sort of batten to keep it flat against the wall. For example, a flat wooden batten, bamboo, doweling or something more quirky. The simplest way is to fold the top of the hanging to the back and sew it down to create a sleeve. So you need to know now the measurements for the batten or pole so that you know how far down to start the felting. That's why we've allowed a good margin at the top of this piece. In addition, you will need strong cord or thread to attach it to the wall. Twool is a company based here on Dartmoor and I often use this beautiful Dartmoor wool rope as an attractive finish. But there are other ways to hang your work which I cover in the tutorial Fibre testing, hanging and aftercare. Always use the pure wool pad underneath the area you are needling. The felting action tangles the fibres together so you regularly need to lift your work off the pad to stop it becoming part of the pad. This is the felting needle. It's very sharp and barbed to about two centimetres down. So go no further than that when you're needling. Make sure the needles are in firmly. By reversing the needles in the two wooden plugs, you can store them in the handle for safekeeping. The wool felt is a lovely surface to work with, whether it's the grey or the white. I often think a background isn't necessary, but other times I love to play with the beautiful effects you can get from the dyed wool tops. To me, it's like working with coloured pencils. I'm going to show you some ways of handling the wool to create different effects, whether you want solid colour or more delicate wispy effects that explore colour blends. Let's take a closer look at the fibres. These are called wool tops. If you take a little tuft from the end, you'll see how long these fibres are. That's about six inches maybe. They're quite long. So when you're pulling off a tuft of wool, you need to account for that length because if you're holding it too close, you'll find it really hard. You'll be breaking the fibres essentially. So keep your hands far apart and Pull gently from the end and you'll have a nice tuft to be working with. Fish scaling is just overlapping the tufts. And notice how I turn the tufts around for subsequent vertical rows to make a smoother join. A background should be roughly needle felted in before you add a foreground design. I often use a tool in each hand when I'm needling an area as this speeds up the process and also reduces the repetitive strain on your dominant hand. You can fill in gaps at any time. So now you know how to create a solid colour by pulling tufts off the end of the wool tops, fish scaling and basic needling in. You can create a different effect by spacing the tufts, placing the fibres in different directions, for instance vertically, horizontally, diagonally, and varying the colours. By pulling a very thin strip of wool off the side of a long length of tops, you're effectively creating a line that you can draw with. and you may even be able to split that for very delicate lines. This sample is showing some of the blue patches with just a few yellow fibres needle felted at right angles. I've pulled off a few inches of a green strand to needle in a fine line like a plant stalk. 
Note that my row of three needles are running parallel to the stalk to make it narrow. Whereas here I've laid down another section of the green and I'm needling it in with the three needles running at right angles to the fibres to make a wider stalk. Experiment with fine slivers of wool. See how fine you can go with variable qualities of line. Try looping, lettering and simple shapes. And don't worry about making a picture, just let yourself play. Take a short tuft of wool, pull fine strips off the middle. You'll notice they bend in a pleasing way. I like the saying, less is more, and this is definitely the case with wool. You can achieve great delicacy. Try to be methodical when needling an expanse like this. First lightly felt the whole area down, then come back and needle a small postcard sized area really thoroughly until the fibres are well integrated. Personally, I like the fibres to look embedded in the felt because it then has permanence and is less likely to look shabby or dusty in time. It's always possible that a felt wall hanging will need careful washing in years to come and if the work is well needled, then it will be safe to wash. There's a lot more movement here, so it, it works to work over it. When you've got a big expanse like that, um, yeah. that you don't want falling off. Mm. <laughs> and also in the future, um, you want this to be hanging for decades somewhere nice. And if there's bits of fluff sticking out, they're going to catch dust. Mm. And um, it's also going to be difficult to, to wash it. Yeah. And so the more that everything is embedded in and embroidered in mm. and flat, the better. Okay. For an extra integration of the fibres, you can work both sides and finishing with the right side. So that's three lots of needling. But you will notice the background felt, i.e. the white or the dark grey, will appear more and soften the overall effect. But if that's too much for you, just run your finger over the surface. If the fibres are moving, then you will need to needle it more. If they don't move, then it's fine to move on to another section. Sometimes I deliberately work from the back, needling the fibres as much as I can to the front to achieve a very soft form. Then I turn it over to the right side to add details. This sample shows both approaches, that is, working both from the back and the front. Another way of drawing a fine line is to use woolen yarn. You may have noticed the bundles of yarn available on the website. These are pure wool tapestry yarns in a wide range of colours and are very useful for adding a detail that requires defining or needs a splash of colour. You might have your own stash of yarns, and I encourage the use of natural fibres for environmental reasons. For more information on this, have a look at the fibre testing tutorial. If yarns are fairly softly spun, i.e. not too twisted, you can needle them into the felt, in which case it's equivalent to drawing. If a yarn is too thick, you may be able to split the ply. This is a soft three-ply knitting yarn. If the yarn proves unsuitable, then you might like to use it for embroidery instead. Either way, it's worth doing a small sample first. I've covered the basics in this tutorial as a guide to inspire you to create your own wall hanging and I hope you'll find the other tutorials helpful too to encourage a variety of materials and techniques. The rest of this video is time-lapsed footage showing the making of a small wall hanging inspired by an illustration in a children's book by Brian Wellsmith.